Hi, this is lesson 3.3 on using probabilities and it's the one bit of data mining with Weka that we're going to see a little bit of mathematics. But don't worry, I'll take you through it gently. So the 1R strategy that we've just been studying assumes that there is one of the attributes that does all the work, that takes the responsibility of the decision. That's a simple strategy. And another simple strategy is the opposite, to assume that all of the attributes contribute equally and independently to the decision. This is called the naive Bayes method. I'll explain the name later on. So there's two assumptions that underlie naive Bayes, the at that the attributes are equally important and that they're statistically independent. That is, knowing the value of one of the attributes doesn't tell you anything about the value of any of the other attributes. Now this independence assumption is never actually correct, but the method based on it often works well in practice. So there's a theorem in probability called Bayes' theorem after this guy Thomas Bayes from the 18th century. And it's about the probability of a hypothesis, H, given evidence. So in our case, the hypothesis is a class of an instance, and the evidence is the attribute values of the instance. And the theorem is that the probability of H given E, the class given the instance, the hypothesis given the evidence, is equal to the probability of E given H times the probability of H divided by the probability of E. So P of H by itself is the called the a priori probability of the hypothesis H. That's the probability of the event before any evidence is seen. So that's really um, the baseline probability of the event. So for example, in the weather data, I think there are nine yeses and five noes. So the baseline probability of the hypothesis play equals yes is 9 over 14, and play equals no is 5 over 14. And what this equation says is how to update that probability, PR of H, when you see some evidence to get what's called the a posteriori probability of H. That means afterwards, after the evidence. And the evidence in our case is the attribute values of an unknown instance. That's E. So that's Bayes' theorem. Now, what makes this method naive? The naive assumption is I've said it before, the evidence splits into parts that are statistically independent. So the parts of the evidence in our case are the different attribute values, the four different attribute values in the weather data. And when you have independent events, the probabilities multiply. So the probability of H given E, according to the top equation, is the probability of E given H times the prior probability PR of H divided by the probability of the evidence. And the probability of E given H splits up into these parts. The probability of E1 given H, the first attribute value, E2 given H, the second attribute value, and so on for all of the attributes. Well, that's maybe a bit abstract. Let's look at the actual weather data. Here it is on the right-hand side, the weather data. And in the large table at the top, We've taken each of the attributes, Outlook, start with Outlook, and we've looked at under the yes hypothesis and the no hypothesis how many times the Outlook is sunny. It's sunny twice under yes and three times under no. That comes straight from the data in the table. Overcast, well, when the Outlook is overcast, it's always a yes instance. So there are four of those and zero no instances. And then rainy is three yes instances and two no instances. So those numbers just come straight from the uh, data table given the instance values. And then we take those numbers and underneath we make them into probabilities. So let's say we know the hypothesis. That is, let's say we know it's a yes. Then the probability of it being sunny is two ninths, overcast four ninths, and rainy three ninths, simply because when you add up two plus four plus three, you get nine. So those are the probabilities. And if we know that the outcome is no, the probabilities are sunny uh, three fifths, overcast zero fifths, and rainy two fifths. That's for the outlook attribute. That's what we're looking for, you see, the probability of each of these 
uh, uh, attribute values given a hypothesis, H. So the next attribute is temperature, and we just do the same thing with that to get the probabilities of the three values, hot, mild, and cool, under the yes hypothesis or the no hypothesis. And the same with humidity and windy. And play, uh, that's the prior probability, PR of H. It's yes, 9 fourteenths of the time, no, 5 fourteenths of the time, even if you don't know anything about the attribute values. So the equation we're looking at is this one below, and we just need to work it out. So here's an example. Here's an unknown day, a new day. We don't know what the value of play is, but we know it's sunny, cool, high, and windy. Windy is true. So we can just multiply up these probabilities. If we multiply for the yes hypothesis, we get 2 ninths times 3 ninths times 3 ninths times 3 ninths. Those are just the numbers on the previous slide. PR of E1 given H, E2 given H, E4 given H. Finally, PR of H, that is 9 fourteenths. And uh, that gives us a probability of 0 0.0053 when you, uh, a likelihood, I should say, of 0 0.0053 when you multiply them. And then from the no class, we do the same to get a likelihood of 0 0.0206. These numbers are not probabilities. Probabilities have to add up to one. They're likelihoods. But we can get the probabilities from them by using a straightforward technique of normalization. Uh, likelihoods for yes and no, and we normalize them as shown below to make them add up to one. That's how we get the, uh, the probability of play on a new day with different attribute values. So just to go through that again, the evidence is outlook is sunny, temperature is cool, humidity is high, windy is true. We don't know what play is. The probability of a yes, given the evidence, is the product of those four probabilities, for one for outlook, temperature, humidity, and windy, times the prior probability, which is just the um, baseline probability of a yes. And that gives us the that uh, product of fractions divided by PR of E. We don't know what PR of E is, but it doesn't matter because we can do the same calculation for PR of no given E, which gives us another equation just like this. And then we can calculate the actual probabilities by normalizing them so that the two probabilities add up to one. PR of yes given E plus PR of no given E equals one. It's actually quite simple when you look at it in numbers. And it's very simple when you look at it in Weka as well. I'm going to go to Weka here. I'm going to open the nominal weather data, which is here. Uh, and we've seen that before, of course, many times. I'm going to uh, go to classify. I'm going to use the naive Bayes method. It's under this Bayes category here. There's a lot of implementations of different variants of Bayes. I'm just going to use the straightforward naive Bayes method here. And then I'll just run it. So this is what we get. The success probability calculated according to cross-validation. More interestingly, we get uh, the model. And the model is just like the table I showed you before for divided under the yes class and the no class. We've got the four attributes, outlook, temperature, humidity, and windy. And then uh, we've got for each of the attribute values, we've got the number of times that attribute value appears. Now there's one little and important difference between this table and the one I showed you before. Let me go back to my slide and look at these numbers. You can see that for outlook under yes on my slide, I've got two, four, and three. And uh, Weka has got 3, 5, and 4. That's one more each time for a total of 12 instead of a total of 9. The reason is that Weka adds 1 to all of the counts. And the reason it does this is to get rid of the zeros. In the original table, under Outlook, under No, the probability of overcast given No is 0. And we're going to be multiplying that into things. So what that would mean, in effect, if we took that zero at face value, is that the probability of the class being no, given any day for which overcast outlook was overcast, would be zero, because anything multiplied by zero is zero. 
these zeros in probability terms have a sort of a veto over all of the other numbers. And we don't want that. We don't want to categorically conclude that it must be a no day on the basis of the it's overcast and we've never seen an overcast outlook on a no day before. It's called the zero frequency problem. And Weka's solution, the most common solution, is very simple. We just add one to all the counts. So that's why all those numbers in the Weka table are one bigger than the numbers in the table on the slide. Aside from that, it's all exactly the same. So we're avoiding zero frequencies by effectively starting all counts at one instead of starting them at zero. So they can't be end up at zero. OK, that's the naive Bayes method. The assumption is that all attributes contribute equally and independently to the outcome. And it works surprisingly well, even in situations where the independent assumption is clearly violated. Why does it work so well when the assumption is wrong? Well, that's a good question. Basically, the classification doesn't need accurate probability estimates. We're just going to choose as the class the thing with the largest, the outcome with the largest probability. So as long as the greatest probability is assigned to the correct class, it doesn't matter if the probability estimates are all that accurate. This actually means that if you add redundant attributes, you get problems with naive Bayes. The extreme case of dependence is where two attributes have got the same values, identical attributes. And uh, that will cause havoc with the naive Bayes method. However, Weka contains methods for attribute selection to allow you to select a subset of fairly independent attributes, after which you can safely use naive Bayes. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff on statistical modeling in section 4.2 of the course text. And uh, now you need to go and do that activity. See you soon.